Well, hello, welcome to the THP studio. Glad to have you here. As you can already tell, we're gonna be talking about cameras today. And as a bit of a camera enthusiast or camera nerd, however you wanna put it, I'm excited to be talking about the gear that we use to film our hunts. Okay, so we have three different styles of cameras that we'll talk about that we use on a regular basis for filming hunts. And they all have slightly different purposes and different strengths and weaknesses. So I'll clear the table here a little bit and we'll start with the camcorder. All right, here we go. The primary camera that we use is the Sony X80. It's a 4K prosumer video camera that has XLR audio inputs that allows us to use a shotgun microphone and a wireless microphone. And obviously good audio is very important to our overall production. And especially using a wireless microphone where you can record that subtle dialogue uh, a lot of times when the animal's coming in is when things get real intense, but if you don't have the wireless mic, you know, it can be hard to pick up on that. Also, if the hunter moves away from the camera, if they're stalking an animal or if they're recovering an animal that they just shot, you still want to be able to record that dialogue. You got the lead one. I'm gonna go get on him quick. Dude. That setup was perfect. Yeah, that the, brush I was starting, I don't know if he saw us or not. We use the X80 as our primary camera for filming hunts. I'd say 95% or more of the hunts that we film are gonna be off of this camera. Occasionally I'll use a mirrorless camera, which I'll touch on here in a little bit. And that style of camera, the digital cinema, the mirrorless and DSLRs, those cameras have gotten more popular in recent years for filming hunts, especially if the production style calls for that kind of aesthetic that you can only get from you know, a large sensor camera. But we've really stuck to the camcorder style video cameras for filming our hunts. And a couple of the main reasons are that they're just inherently easier to use. They've got the built-in zoom lens. They also allow the use of a lens controller, which makes it easier to film. And since we're incorporating in new interns every year, you know, you have to reteach those basic camera skills. And it's just easier to teach on the camcorder style as opposed to a mirrorless camera or DSLR. And also for self-filming hunts, which of course we don't, we'd rather not do, but it's just the way things go sometimes, it's much, much easier using the camcorder style right. video camera as opposed to the a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Way easier. There's a lot of, a lot of different reasons and we can do a separate video on that some other time. Got it. The major features uh, of, of the reason why we use this camera are, is that it's small and compact. Again, it's very functional for a mobile style of hunting. In this particular model, you can shoot in 4K resolution, which has uh, some distinct advantages. When you film in 4K and then you edit in a 1080 timeline, it gives you a lot of ability to crop in or reframe the shot. And we film most of our hunting footage in 4K. It's certainly not necessary for creating good videos. You know, most videos are published in high definition, but it does give you some advantages when it comes to editing and post-production. And especially if you're self-filming, 4K is such a huge advantage, again, just with the ability to uh, to scale in and reframe the shot because a lot of times for self filmers you have the tendency to zoom out when the shot is about to happen because you're trying to keep the animal in frame and get your release on the string and pull back and make the shot or get your gun up whatever the case may be but if you film in 4k it allows you to stay a little bit wider and get the shot off and then in post-production crop in and reframe if you need to so again 4k is hugely beneficial there if you're a serious self filmer i would highly highly recommend getting some kind of camera that can film in 4k resolution another feature that we like about the x80 is that you can shoot in high frame rate it'll shoot up to 120 frames per second in high definition slow motion allows more freedom for creativity and we'll incorporate it occasionally especially for post-harvest footage or for fast-moving objects or situations where something is just gonna look really cool, slow it down. So we don't use it a lot. It's not a huge part of our overall production, probably more for turkey hunting than deer hunting, but it is nice to have that option. Another important feature about this camera is its ability in low light. The X80 has a one inch CMOS sensor, which is a relatively large sensor for a camcorder. A lot of the cameras that we used in the past that had smaller sensors really suffered in low light situations, and it wasn't uncommon to lose the first and the, the last 10 minutes of shooting light or more because the footage was just too dark. You couldn't see anything. 
But with the X80, our experience has been that if you shoot in the manual mode, if you use the proper settings and have the right picture profile, that you can film right up until the end of legal shooting time. Or you can film right at first light too. Basically, we don't lose any legal shooting time on either end because of the low light performance of this camera. All right, so those are the major features uh, with the low light performance, the frame rate options, the resolution options with the the audio inputs and with its small form factor and lightweight, it's a great overall camera for filming hunts and does the majority of the work. Most of the hunting footage you see is off of these cameras. Okay, so moving on, the mirrorless cameras or DSLRs, you know, there's some slight technical differences, but essentially they'd fall into the same category. And after you know probably a decade of technical improvement now, they shoot really, really nice video. In fact, a lot of people prefer to use this style of camera just because of the overall kind of cinematic aesthetic that you can get out of these cameras. Okay, so the two mirrorless cameras we have here are the Sony a6500 and the Panasonic GH5. And this is my baby right here. This is probably my favorite camera to use. These cameras primarily get used for, you know, filming just about everything else. The lifestyle stuff, the kind of the behind the scenes, B-roll, beauty footage, uh, it does really good slow motion, uh, does real good photo time lapses. And these cameras especially come out when somebody has shot a deer or a turkey and we just want to, you know, get a second camera in there, get a slightly different look. And really it's just a personal preference. It's not like we would need to use these cameras, but I feel if, if used properly, it can enhance the overall production. And obviously we use them for their still photography capabilities as well. The A6500 is probably our favorite still camera. This camera is really small and compact, lightweight, easy to tote around. And on this one, we have a, you know, a small wide angle lens. It's a 10 to 18 millimeter. And with the sensor crop, it's essentially like a 17 millimeter at the, at the wide end. But we use this a lot for photography, nighttime lapses, and also for those interactive type interviews where we're moving around with the subject and just kind of show what's going on. So that's the A6500. And like I said, the Panasonic GH5, this is my favorite camera. And we use a number of different lenses, but this one in particular is a 24 to 105. It's just a really versatile setup. You can really cover a lot of filming situations. And like I said, I filmed almost the entire Arizona hunt on this camera. And it was just such a beautiful landscape that I wanted to um, use a camera that could uh, help to you know, bring that out. There are some challenges with it in that it doesn't have those professional audio features like the X80, but this Rode Video Micro microphone does a real nice job. I mean, we've been real happy with it. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive microphone, just plugs right into the 3.5 millimeter input. So again, we like to use the mirrorless or DSLR type cameras. They have that cinematic aesthetic, that shallow depth of field that you just can't get out of the camcorders. Sometimes we'll carry them along to get B-roll while we're walking to the stand or while in the stand. But for the most part, we're trying to minimize the amount of gear that we're carrying to the field. So when we're filming hunts, uh, we're almost always gonna have two cameras, but the majority of the time it's gonna be the camcorder and then the GoPro, which we'll talk about next. Okay, last but not least in our arsenal is the GoPro. Most people are very familiar with what GoPros are and what they can do, so I won't spend too much time on it, but I will talk a little bit about the rig here. And this is a, a gooseneck with a clamp that is missing right now. One of the other guys must have it. So normally this would have a clamp on the bottom that you can attach to a tree limb, uh, to your kayak. On a tripod leg, I mean, it will fit in a lot of different places. And to complete the rig, we use a, a custom case and it houses the audio adapter that allows you to use the microphone, which overcomes one of the GoPro's shortcomings in that it just doesn't record good audio without an external microphone. The bird gobbled again. I got a lot better gauge on where he's at. He's definitely on private, but he's not very far from the public at all. No good cold snaps, no weather fronts moving in for the rest of the season, all pretty stagnant, low pressure warm day is coming up so tonight is the last decent weather that's going to be for the season so i'm going to make an aggressive move in so we use this rig in a lot of different ways and one of the reasons for building it like this was to do kind of that vlog style that selfie style interview and give a slightly different more interactive look when we're scouting or when we're hunting and just basically showing and explaining what is going on once you find these beds it's important to get down in them and see what the deer can see i just came in right through there there's more bedding right on the other side of this bush right here. 
But right here in this one in particular, the deer is laying here facing this direction. The GoPro is real nice in that it's just a one button press to record. You don't have to worry about the exposure. You don't have to worry about the focus. So really that's why we use this rig is just to be more interactive and hopefully feel like it's, you know, more in the moment instead of just doing your traditional interviews off of your primary camera or, or camcorder, whatever it may be. And then of course, once we get to the hunting location, we'll use it as a, a second angle camera and ideally use it in a way where you get the hunter and the animal in the same frame. A lot of times people will, will set it up to where the camera is pointing back at them. But if you only have one, what I would recommend doing, of course, is setting it up to where you get yourself and, and where you think the animal is going to walk through and where you get your shot. That's kind of the ultimate shot that you're looking for. You know, if you have to, you can always recreate the shot of the camera in front of the hunter, but you can't recreate the animal coming in and getting shot. Obviously, that's a, that's a one and done. So that's how we tend to set these up is to try to get the hunter and the animal in the same frame. This rig also allow for the use of a camera light. So for filming in the dark, we can mount a video light on here as well and then attach the microphone to that. Okay, so that covers the GoPro rig and that is all the cameras that we use on a regular basis to film our hunts. If you have any questions or comments, of course, leave it below. We're happy to help out. If you need any advice on a camera that you're trying to choose, you know, hopefully this gives you an idea of, of what we use and, and why we use it and how we use it. As we continue to go on this summer, and then especially as we get into hunting season, we'll continue to do more of how to film your hunt type videos where we can get more specific based on any comments or feedback and what people are, are most interested in. So as always, thank you guys for watching. We appreciate your support, your feedback, and we will see you on the next video.